where I reveal the through line. So let's recap. On Monday, I talked about my history and how I got my love of the future and wanting to create a better world for humanity. On Tuesday, I talked a little bit about my career in innovation and technology and how I was always thinking forward in new things. On Thursday, I talked a little bit about <clears throat> exposing myself to new things and becoming a polymath, basically someone who is interested in absolutely everything. And then once I realized I was interested in absolutely everything, I wanted to figure out what pulls the, all of this stuff together. The through line, the specific thing or the specific niche or vision where I can take all of this content that I've created, all of these things that I've done in over time and pull them together into a cohesive vision. This is the vision. So I realized from the very, very beginning, the very, very beginning that I wanted to live in that future. I wanted to live in the utopian future of something like Star Trek. Maybe not Star Trek specifically, but the kind of utopian future that existed in the original series of Star Trek, where everyone was working together, the technology assisted them to work together, and we went boldly where no one had gone before. That's where I wanted to go. So how do I take all of the disparate things that I've done over my lifetime and my career and pull them into a single concept and especially now with AI and what I realized that before AI it was technology and what my mantra would have been was bettering humans through technology because if you think if I think about everything that I've worked on over the last little while or over my, almost my entire career, it's trying to figure out or trying to get technology to, or create technology that improves the lives of humans. The technology itself improves the lives of humans, right? And the thing is, the biggest problem with technology is that it still doesn't just work. And that is the problem we have had with technology from the very beginning. There is the, a distance that's not a distance. What's the word I'm looking for? There is the human and the technology. And the problem is, is that you have technologists between the humans and the technologists. And the technologists understand the, the technology perfectly. We technologists perfectly understand the technology. The only problem is the customer doesn't understand the technology. So a lot of times we build, as technologists, we build technology for other technologists. We don't build it for consumers. We don't build it for regular people. So technology should just work. For example, a smart light bulb should be e so easy that you take it out of the bag, you take it out of its case, and you screw it in, and it starts working. You don't have to spend you know, hours and hours connecting it to your Wi-Fi and stuff like that. The technology is just not there. Technology does not work just work until now until now and when I say it doesn't just work I say it requires some level of technological expertise to be able to figure out how to get to the technology to work properly when you take something out of the box a lot of, a lot of this tech now I'm not gonna say that it's not advanced a lot of the tech is pretty advanced so when you take Alexa out of the box and you plug Alexa in there's still some configuration involved and some of it is pretty complicated but it's not not as bad as it could have been. It's still not perfect. It's still not pull it out, plug it in, boom, you're done. There's still some technology configuration required, which should just happen automatically. And this is where AI comes in. And generative AI, now I know AI has been around for a long time, and I joke joke around with some folks. It's only been around since late, since last year. Come on, folks. It's been around longer than that. But generative AI has exploded onto the scene a year ago, right? A little over a year ago. And one of the things that really impressed me about generative AI was its simplicity. That a regular human person 
could interact with the technology in such a way that they could understand the technology. So unlike the technology that I was talking to before, whereas you had the technology, you had a technologist and you had a, a person, you needed the technologist between the, the technology and the person to be able to configure the technology or you needed a person to be pretty technical or fairly technical or technical, a little technical to be able to figure it out. The technology didn't just work. And with generative AI, we've leapt that barrier. The technology just works. And you can understand the technology just works if you sit down and chat with it. So a regular human person who has no technology background can sit down and converse with ChatGPT or Claude or any of the chatbots out there. And sure, sometimes it doesn't perfectly work because you may not get accurate results in some cases. But the interfacing with the technology, which was always a problem before, just works. So we are finally in the perfect place. I mean, we haven't refined it 100%, but we are seeing the beginning of the wedge. And that's when I realized, when I looked at everything that I did. So what I did is I took my 1600 blog posts, I took my podcast, I took titles of everything and I put them on note cards. And when I took those note cards, I took those note cards and I threw them on the desk and I started putting them in clusters, putting them in groups to try and figure out, okay, this is total chaos here. All of the things that I've been interested in, all the things that I'm talking about, this is total chaos here. There's got to be some kind of order in the chaos. And guess what? An order emerged from the chaos. And the order was this. Even though I considered myself a technologist and I'm into technology and I love technology and I think technology is great, technology was not the number one thing that I talked about. So you might not know this, but I also have a philosophy degree. I went to, I went and um, got a philosophy, my very first degree was in philosophy until I switched it or my, so the second thing, the first thing that I was talking about was not technology. The first topic, when I clustered everything together, was humanity. That's right, folks. Here I am, a techie, an introvert. I thought to myself, I was a techie. I'm an innovator. I'm an inventor. I create new things. But I'm a technologist at heart. And what did I talk about most of the time? When I looked at all of the content that I'd ever created from the beginning, it's people. I was talking about people. I was talking about helping people how people can become better. What was the second most topic? Technology or AI. Technology for a while, but then once AI became big, once generative AI became big, it was mostly AI. So it's humanity and AI. And then some innovation and change. And then I realized I put it all together. It just was exploded into my head. I thought to myself, this is obvious. It's bettering humanity with AI. At first it was bettering humanity with technology, but now it's bettering humanity with AI because AI has finally gotten to the point with generative AI that it has become a tool that anybody can use at all because it uses a standard human interface that we're all familiar with. So what's the through line? Better humans with AI. That's what everything has been culminating towards. And in this culmination, I've come up with a brand new place, a new place for us to spend some time in. And it's called 10xu.us. And basically what it is, is a site and uh, it's, not, it's not a newsletter, I call it a news book, and a community for individuals to help each other become better human beings through AI. And these better human beings through AI go into three different categories. It's stuff that we're all super concerned with. It's health, wealth, and happiness. We need, we need to be healthy. We need to be wealthy in this world, and we want to be happy. So how do we use AI to make us better humans in those areas and others? And this is a full-on experiment. I'm building this whole thing in public. 
10xyou.us. And it's going to be limited to 10,000 citizens. And once we get the 10,000 citizens in, then we'll start talking to each other. Because I don't want anybody to miss any of the stuff that we're talking about. And that's the thing that pisses me off with normal newsletters. It's like you get in, and people have already been in this, and, they, and you have to go back and look at what's there before. But I don't want to do that. I want every community member, every citizen in the 10XU community to be able to have, get it, take advantage of everything from the beginning. Now, if there's another tool that lets people do that without having to start from scratch... I'd love to hear about it. So the culmination of all of this is coming into 10XU. And it's not just me. It's everyone out there. Everyone out there who wants to help people become better humans with AI. I would love your support. Join me in helping us to make humanity better. Because you can't have a better future unless you make better humans. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.